Now I'm ready to preach. You good, church? Hallelujah. It's wonderful because Pastor Glenn never told me what time to finish. So <laughs> when I'm done, I'm done. When Pastor uh, Glenn invited us to preach some months back and uh, God instantly spoke a phrase to me and on the surface the phrase didn't sound overly encouraging, which is a really great way to speak the first time you do in a church, to bring a word that doesn't sound overly encouraging. But I ask you to not check out before I finish. Is that okay, church? Are we good? Come on. I, I want to see if you guys can now do the first service because there was a way smaller number and they were way more vocal. So uh, I want you to add your agreement to what God is saying and doing in this place and to lean in in the Spirit. Here's the phrase that God spoke to me. It's time to live up to your name. It's time to live up to your name. It's time to live up to your name. And you can see why I, I wrestled with that at first. Andy, when I come and say, it's time to live up to your name, you, you don't want to be like coming and just saying, come on, it's time to live up to your name, like you're not doing good enough. But I knew God had spoken, so I started to lean in. And He says, I want to say three things here. Number one, it's time. It's time. It's time. Number two, to live up. To live up. And number three, to your name. It's time to live up to your name. And so I want to jump into this and just download what I felt the Holy Spirit say, and uh, we'll end up at the place that He wants us to end up in today. Father, I pray You'll bless Your Word in Jesus' name. That it'll be a now word for every individual before this church, for this church. I hear the Lord just say right now, you need to understand your church, God's plan for your church is much bigger than your church. It's not in my notes, I'm just feeling the Holy Spirit say, you've got to plant this right now. You're not going to receive this Word today if you think this Word is just about you. This Word is not just about your church. This Word is about the region. This region is about this nation, it's about the nations of the earth. And above all, it is about the glory of God. Your life exists for the glory of God, not for the comfort of your butt. Our life exists for God to be glorified, not for me to feel good. It is about the glory of God. Jesus Christ dying on the cross was about the glory of God. Paul writing letters to the churches in prison was about the glory of God. God is looking for a people who will go beyond comfort and live their life for the glory of God. God is looking for some selfless Christians, some Christians who deny themselves, take up their cross and follow Jesus. When you're hurt, you deny yourself. You take up your cross and you follow Jesus. When you have questions, we deny ourselves. We take up our cross and we follow Christ Jesus. Can I declare that your life, the sum total of your life is not about you receiving answers to your questions, but about a, denying ourselves, taking up a cross and following Jesus. And I want to declare it's time, number one, for revival. It's time for revival. Three people agree. It's time for revival. I'm doing my best to bring it on. It's time for revival. God spoke to me last year and said, revival, as God said to me, um, it's, revival is coming, but it's going to look different than what we expect. Revival is the church coming back again to God's original. That's what revival is. Revival is not God just doing a new thing. It's us coming back to God's original intention. And I want to just lean into this. God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. In marriage, God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. In relationships, God sets the pattern. Come on, church, we follow the pattern. When it comes to building the church, God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. When it comes to how we treat people, God sets the pattern. We follow the pattern. When it comes to how we serve our bosses or how we treat those that uh, um, work for us, God sets the pattern. We follow the the pattern. The revival is coming back again. The word pattern means a repeated design. We need to understand our God is a God of design. He's a God of intention. He didn't fling something out into chaos and said, you make up your own mind. No, God is a God of design. He's a God of order. And He has set a pattern to be followed. 
The word pattern means a set of instructions to be followed in making an item, an example for others to follow. I just want to cry out to the church right now that God's intention was that we were followers of Jesus Christ, not dictators to God about what we want. We're called to be followers of Jesus Christ and we can't follow Christ unless we deny ourselves. That means it's not about what I want. It's not about me getting what I want. It's not about everyone doing what I want. It's deny yourself, take up your cross and follow Jesus. The cry of my heart is not that I am seen, that I am noticed, that people like me, but God is glorified. That's what God wants in His church. It's time for revival. We are made in God's image. God is not made in our image. God sets the pattern. We follow the the pattern. It's time for revival. I hear the Lord just saying, some of you are wanting God to say something different than what you've read in the Bible and you knew God spoke to you. Did that make sense? Some of you have had questions and you, God has spoken to you <laughs> from His Word. And some of you are wrestling with that and that's okay. It's okay to wrestle. Jesus said, God, is it possible to remove this cup from me? He wrestled. Yet where did He land? Not my will, but yours be done. The different thing that you're wanting God to say is not His best for you. His best is what He's already said. His best is what He's already said in His Word. It's time for revival. Number two, it's time for repentance. It's time for repentance. Repentance is not just, I'm sorry. The word repentance in the Greek means to think differently, to exercise the mind. It's a different way of thinking. Oh, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that you'll join me as we just lean into God's Word right now. It's time to live up to your name. It's time for revival, to come back to God's original. How are we going to do that, church? By repentance, by changing the way we think, by being transformed by the renewing of our mind. Jesus came in, in, uh, Rev- in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, and it says, from that time on, Jesus Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. He was not just saying, just say you're sorry for what you've done. He's saying it's time to change our whole way of thinking. It means to exercise the mind. Anyone ever exercise? Come on, you don't do it once and hope it sticks. You go again and you go again and you go again and you feel the pain and you go again. You don't see the results and you go again. Come on, church. This is is what it means to repent again and again. I got to continually come back because the world is continually bombarding us with stuff that is against God's pattern, against God's design, against God's intention. And sometimes we are going with the flow of the world's um, current, the government's current, the policies of this day. And God is saying, I need some people that say, I need to come back to kingdom minded thinking. Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Revival, come on, it's about coming and get to God's pattern. There's a world's pattern and there's God's pattern. Whose pattern are you and I following? Huh. Oh, you said God's, and that's wonderful. My question is, from day to day, would the fruit of our lives match up to the fruit of our lips? the declaration of our lips. Would that person that you work with clearly see that, yes, you follow the pattern of God, not the pattern of this world? Would your spouse see that you follow the pattern of God, not the pattern of this world? Would the person on your left or on your right say the fruit of your life is that you follow the pattern of God, not the pattern of this world? The Bible says do not conform, do not be shaped into the form of the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the washing of the water, by the Word. And it's only then that you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. How many people want to do the will of God? 
How many people truly want to do the will of God? You want your life to matter for the kingdom of God. That's what I want in my life. How can it happen? It cannot happen unless we allow the Spirit of God to change the whole way that we think. Even in the Old Testament, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on what? Do not lean on your what? Your own understanding. Too often we're leaning on our own understanding. We're stuck until we can understand. Don't lean on that. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. Hmm, I hear the Lord speaking to me right now. Come on, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Understanding is about the present and often about the past, trying to reconcile. No, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your path. Sometimes we want understanding on here. And God says, I've got a path here. Would you come with me? And we go, we can't until I understand. And God says, don't lean on that. Don't allow your lack of understanding to step you into disobedience about what God has called you to do. You want to say, this is a bit direct today. And can I just say, um, number one, read your Bible and read Jesus. <laughs> he wasn't here just to make us all feel good. It was about God. This is about your kingdom. This is about your kingdom. Jesus wasn't comfortable hanging on a cross, but he did it to bring his Father glory and reconcile people to God the Father. And it is his will that none should perish school today. And he is looking for some people to partner with him, not just to preach something from a platform, not just to pass on a scripture, not just to say something on social media, but live a life that is worth following. Live a life that actually connects people with God. This is about the kingdom of God. The church is about the kingdom of God. The church is about God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. It's not about me being comfortable and liking everything. It's about the kingdom of God. God is building His church. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. We got to understand that the gates of hell are attacking the church, but we want to be people that are transformed. God, it's not about me, but God, how can I bless today? How can I add value today? How can I do someone good today? Even when I come to the house of God, not just to receive, but to give, to give, to give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I'm just trying to download that God is calling us up to something higher. This is not about coming out of lockdown and you know, it's good just to get back to church. God is wanting us not to just come back and just to keep on going or come back and to pick some things up. I believe in the Spirit. God is saying it's launch time. It's launch time. It's launch time in the Spirit. God is wanting to do something in this earth and His chosen vessel and vehicle is the church of Jesus Christ. God wants to do something in us. It's time for revival, return to God's original. It's time for repentance, to think differently, to exercise the mind. And it's time for right living. Can I hear an amen? You're doing well. Praise God. It's time for right living. Right living is not legalism, it's godliness. Right living is not legalism, it's godliness. Right living is not legalism. Right living is not legalism, it's godliness. And I feel the Lord spoke this to me some time ago that grace without truth is license. Truth without grace is legalism. But grace and truth in fullness is liberty, which is freedom. We need to stop, I was saying to pastor before, we need to stop trying to come up to the balance between grace and truth. God said to me, I don't like balance, I like fullness. I need you to hear me. John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. He was full of grace and full of truth. We need the body of Christ to be full of grace and full of truth. Don't tell me, grace, 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 grace. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not Bible, and it keeps people in bondage. We need to be people, neither should we be people that speak truth, 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 with no grace grace and no love. 
If Jesus can reveal to someone that you've been married five times and you're currently living with someone else and the result of that encounter with the fullness of grace and truth is she goes to the town and says, come back to this man because I saw something in the heart of the one who is speaking that represented a father that I want to know. We need a restoration of grace and truth in the body of Christ. The Ten Commandments are still Ten Commandments that are still relevant for us today. Can I hear an amen? Tell me which one is not relevant today. People say, no, we're not under law anymore. No, 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 we're not under law, we're under grace, but the grace is not do away with everything God has ever said. And this is pervading the body of Christ. And I'm calling us back today that right living is not legalism, it is godliness. If God says this is sin, then it's still sin today. Can I hear an amen? And he doesn't say it to make you good or to put condemnation. He says, I do not go condemn you anymore to a woman caught in adultery, but go now and leave your life of sin. He still said, this is sin, it will damage you. God only declares, reveals it to us so that we can be free from it, not enslaved to it. The reason why he says don't commit adultery is not because he's trying to make you good, it's because he wants to keep you free from the broken relationship that will be the result of it. Does it make sense? We need to see the heart of a protector, not the heart of a controller when it comes to God. And God is saying holiness is gonna start to pour through my church again, says the Lord. It's gonna start to pour through my church and it's gonna pull people up towards who I am. Very quiet in church this morning. Grace empowers us to do what is right in the eyes of God. It's time for revival, for repentance, for right living. But I also want to say it's time to live up. It's time to live up. It's time to live up. There's a right way of living up and there's a wrong way of living up. The wrong way is to exalt yourself. Lucifer did this. He was in the very presence and majesty of God. In Isaiah 14, 14, it says, I, he said, I will ascend above. I, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds and I will make myself like the most high. Can I remind us, God made us in his image. We don't make God in our image. Isn't that what the children of Israel did, said to Aaron when Moses was up the mountain? Come, let, make gods for us. We don't make gods. God made us. God made us. We, we don't dictate to God what life should look like. God made life. He is life. Can I hear an amen? It's time to live up. And that is not by exalting self, by exalting God. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt Him. Come on. Lift Him up. Jesus said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. I declare by the Spirit of God, if the church starts to lift up Jesus, He will draw people to Himself. We got to get out of God's place and get into our place. We can't draw people. I can't draw people. I can't save people. I can't heal people. But man, God can do it. And when I lift him up and when I talk about how good my God is and how great my God is and that he's still a miracle working God. And even when I didn't see it last time, it's not going to deter my theology and my tenacity to go again and go again and go again and go again. When I lift him up, he starts to draw people to himself. The word of the Lord to some of you, stop trying to draw people and start lifting God up. That child that's away with that, that spouse that's distant, stop trying to draw them to God and just start to lift them up. Come on, by the gentleness of your spirit, by the kindness of your tongue, by your love that goes again and keeps no records of wrong. Can I hear an amen? Come on, There's a di this, is about the, this is about the repentance, a different way of thinking. See, the kingdom is not like the world. The kingdom is not like the world. The church is not like the world. We're called to a different way. We're called to love a different way. We're called to forgive a different way. We're called 
to receive. Come on, extend mercy and love. How many times? 70 times seven. And it's not just like this is what God is requiring of us. This is a reflection of what He does for us. How many people have almost expired God's mercy in your life sometimes you feel? But 70 times 7, he goes, you come again. Come on, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. But I've, I've mucked up so many times. Come on, draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. Come again, come again, come again. If you don't think you can go to God again, it's because the enemy is lying to you, trying to keep you from the one that he is now separated from. He doesn't want you to be close to the one that he used to be close to. And I ain't gonna let him win anymore. Oh, I have struggles myself. I have temptations myself. I have failures myself. And every one of us do. But the difference between those that bring glory to God and point people to God are not the ones that have struggles, but the ones that go again and 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 go again. Go again. Woo! You guys are wearing me out or something. I'm just saying, I don't know what I'm saying. I just pray the Spirit speaking. I just, I just feel these are days not to come back to church and enjoy church. This is days for the church to be the, the, the salt and the light and the kingdom of God extenders on this earth. Come on. This is who we're called to be. This is who we're called to be. God has a plan and includes you, but it doesn't revolve around you. God has a plan for me. It includes me, but man, it doesn't revolve around me. I want to lift him up. I want to lift him up. God is looking for some bold people, but who have a who have a love and a softness and a tenderness of spirit, but are willing to speak the truth in love. Hallelujah. It's time to live up. There's a holy calling on the people of God to be the people of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. God, speak to us. Let us run with perseverance however we want. Let us run with pers perseverance, the career path of my choice. Let us run with perseverance just around the people that I like and that don't annoy me. Let us run with perseverance, the race that has been marked out for us. How? The by fixing our eyes on Jesus. It's time to live up. Come on, live up, live up, live up. The author, the perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. We'd do well just to meditate on that this week. Consider him. Consider him. Think about him. This week, here's a word of the Lord to some of you. The next, this week, when a challenge or a problem, a person or a situation, a difficulty comes to you and you start to consider it, turn and consider him. You might say, but that won't resolve my issue. Is that what life is about? How's it working for us? Consider him. Think about the Lord. What, what's that old song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the things of earth. How? When you work it all out, right? When you can understand it. No, in the, of his glory and his grace. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners <laughs> so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I just want to say that the people of God don't give up. They live up by exalting God. The people of God don't give up, don't cast away the conference, but we live up by exalting God. But here's the statement that I want to challenge us with right now. 
Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you won't grow weary and that you won't lose heart. The Lord said to me, if we never face opposition from sinners, are we really living as Jesus called us to live? If the world is okay with everything you believe, we have a problem. If every unbeliever is comfortable with every standing conviction you have, we have a problem. This is not legalism. This is Bible. This is Bible. This is Bible. We're called to be salt and light. We're called to be salt and light. And we live in a time where God's pattern and God's design is being attacked abused, demolished, replaced at a rampant level and speed around our world. Is this true? What is righteous, what is not? And if you have an opinion that is different, you are called intolerant. And we have now become silent because of possible persecution. I didn't intend to go here, but God wants me to go here. Can I, can, I, can I just say that we should not unnecessarily offend, but must not allow that to be an excuse to be so in sync with the world to minimize any tribulation that we just, uh, we basically wash our hands of where the world's going. God is calling us to be ones who live by his standards, not to bash people, but to, to, to be a living representation of the heart of a God who loves them and says there's a better way that doesn't lead to death and destruction and bondage and slavery. Consider him. Consider him. I want to wrap this up. I want to... Uh, we could the keeper player could come back again. That would be wonderful. It's time to live up to your name. To your name. Our lives are all about the glory of God and the honor of his name. It's not about the glory and honor of my name or your name. It's the glory and honor of his name. That's what it's all about. And I want to declare to you as a church, it's time to live up to your name. Encounter Christian Church. Can I hear an amen? I, I want to encourage you, it's time to live up your name, that you and I are ones that live and daily encounter with God. Daily encounter with God. Again, don't make your last encounter your last encounter. His mercy is new every morning. He's a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I, I tell you, right, I love it. What it says in Psalm 139, it's talking about where can we go from God's presence? Nowhere, right? But then I love the line where it says, when I awake, you're still with me. You're, you're just, I wake up and the first thing, you're right there. Can I say, God is waiting every day for an encounter and not just a moment and then you get on with your day. But let's, we can experience encounters with God all day wherever you are. God is not, <laughs> you know, when you're at work, God's there. If you're there, God's there. He's there. Just get, may we become more aware of His presence, His Spirit. But it's time to live up to our name, Encounter Church. I want to finish with this verse, Acts 4.13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, and they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Uh, when they saw these men and they knew their life and they go, there's something different here. They were astonished. And their only conclusion was they must have been with this Jesus. My question to us as we close is this. 
What do people see when they look at you and how you live your life? And an even, an even more powerful question is this. What conclusion do people make about God after an encounter with you? That's where I want us to land today. Not what do people think of you. What do people think of God after an encounter with you? And I'm not talking about when everything's going good. I'm talking about, you know the dark, the light shines greatest where? Where does the light shine dark greatest? In the darkest. When you and four other people at your work go through the same thing that's devastating and four of them end up in despondency, but you hold your peace, I can tell you right now, people are going to conclude there's something different here. And the Bible says, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that's in you, which means someone's asking a question, hang on, you just lost your job like these four people lost your job. How come this hasn't derailed you? How come there's still a peace? You've just been given the opportunity to point people towards an encounter with the living God. What conclusion do people make about God after they've encountered us? That's a great question. I wonder if we just pray together. I've heard the Lord say, I'm looking for some people who are all in, and I suppose that's what today's all about. Not just starting to come back to church, not just starting to come to some meetings, not just re-emerging, but it's time to live up to your name. It's time for revival, repentance, and right living. It's time to live up glorifying God and make it all about the name of Jesus, the reputation of our Father in heaven. And I just want to make an invitation to anyone who says, God's spoken to me and I want to be all in. Jesus said, do you want to be my disciple? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. Can I just say, it hasn't changed. A disciple is not one who attends church. A disciple is not one who watches church online. Disciples, not one who reads their Bible sometimes or even all the time. Can I just say a disciple is not even one who prays regularly. It's one who denies herself. This is actually not about me. I'm going to take up my cross. It's going to be difficult at times. I'm going to be misunderstood at times. Come on. My preaching today, I run the risk of upsetting and offending some of you in this room today. I'm not under any illusions about that. But I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to see God make disciples. I want to be friends, but I, I, I don't want to just please you. I want to please my Father in heaven. And he says, deny yourself. Take up your cross, Steve. Not everyone's going to understand when you preach the truth as boldly as you do. But hey, the alternative just keeps people in our dysfunction and our self and, in our, and our light just is hidden under something. No, the light is not there to be hidden. It's there to be set on a hill and to light a way for the world to encounter Jesus Christ. So deny yourself, take up your cross and come follow me. My way is the way that works, says the Lord. I've set the pattern. I've set the way it's meant to be. God, I want to come back and I want to be all in for you so that God is glorified. If that is you in this place today, stand to your feet right now in Jesus' name and look to God. Look to God in this moment. God just said two minutes. God just said to me, two minutes can totally change your life right now. I want you to look to God, not, not to me. I want you to totally, you and God, Picture Him there in heaven on the throne. Picture yourself coming before Him. Picture yourself saying, God, I give you everything. God, I give you everything. I'm all in. I want people to be, 
are attracted to you because they see Christ in me. Why don't you just take a moment in your own words to tell God what it means for you to be all in or something that God has been speaking to you about this morning. Come on. You just take a moment right now. God, I give you everything. God, I give you everything. For some of you, God, today I turn my back on that way of thinking, that way of doing. God, would you give me the mind of Christ? God, would you just fill me afresh with the Holy Spirit? Not my will, but yours be done. Come, God. Come, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, would you set every person in this room ablaze with the glory of God? I commission you to leave this building as a sent one for the glory of God. To live in a way that God is glorified and the kingdom of God exists, then it. And all of the all and people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.